Let's we'll start the meeting. Do we have minutes to approve? Somebody want to make a motion? Yes, motion to accept April 25 and May 8th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. You want to take it out of order? Yeah. So Keith has a meeting to go to after this one. Oh, well, so Lynn has graciously agreed to allow Keith to go first. Okay. <laughs> Keith. So I, so I think. That's what I was told. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Brian, do you want to start with the, or I can update them in regards to the, uh, I can do it too. <clears throat> I wanted to just bring up the data a little bit more in regards to the Western Mass, or now Eversource. I still call it Western Mass. Eversource Regional Agreement Mower. I know <clears throat> Brian had probably told you a little bit about it, but this this con this time around, the town of Waitley will be the lead town, which means Eversource will enter into agreement with the town of Waitley, and the town of Waitley will enter into a IMA, I guess, inter municipal agreement with the other five towns, which are like um, Amherst, Pelham, Leverett, Sunderland, Hatfield, and Waitley is the sixth one. So those are the towns that are in our group. Eversource will will um, provide a lease payment, for fi a five-year lease payment for the purchase of this mower. They will offer $130,000 of that about after you factor out the lease numbers, it leaves us with about $122,000 to purchase the tractor. To, to replicate what we presently have, which the town of Sunderland is the current lead town, I can't quite do it for the 130000 or the one twenty-two, whichever way you want to look at it, whether you, when you factor the financing in. But it's real close. We had our meeting here with the um, with Eversource, Brian, myself, and all the other towns. And one of the things that we discussed was possibility of um, maybe wanting to um, either try to get the f other five towns and Waitley to kick a little money in ourselves, or another option is to have the the town of Waitley itself, since the tractor will become ours after the lease payment is done the tractor becomes the property, or is the town of Waitley's, and, and then you move on to the next town on the, in the process, and it's just a rolling cycle. Um, so we don't have, I don't have exact numbers, but we, to replicate what we currently have, we may be as somewhere in the six to $8,000 short. Um, I know timing is, is horrible in, in regards to asking for money, which um, is really nothing we can do because at one point Eversource wasn't sure if the program was going to continue, at least at the um, in the in the department that it that that does this. So um, it is it is moving forward for another another cycle at the very least, um, and so that's just pretty much where we're at. Um, I think maybe by the, the next meeting, I might have more definites as far as if I do need some money, just how much and more exact. But it would probably, you know, that's where I'm, it's leaning at somewhere in the $8,000 range. Um, in one aspect, if we, if we have to use town money to purchase, to put towards it, that $8,000 in my mind is a good investment in the aspect that we're getting a hundred and twenty some odd thousand dollar piece of equipment for a eight thousand dollar investment over the other thing that happens with this program is everybody including Waitley puts money in for a annual maintenance that will come the town will invoice the other six of the five towns and those five <laughs> towns will the money will go into a um, like a revolving type of maintenance account and that'll pay for all the incidental stuff any in part of the in the IMA is anything that's a negligence on behalf of one of the other communities it'll be up to them to to make repairs to it um, other than that a few other things that may add a, 
um, incidental costs is it'll have to come under the town of Waitley's um, insurance. I don't know, Brian, if you have any idea what that might be, but. Um, I don't want to hear, but at least in the Sunderland agreement, that maintenance, fee, that maintenance money was, was, I think, partially paid the insurance. Okay. So a portion of that paid. I mean, that, that insurance. we can, that, those kinds of um, housekeeping stuff, we could contact Sunderland and see how it's, how things worked for them in the past. Um, the registration obviously is, the, you know, the town doesn't pay anything for registration fees, but we would have to have insurance on it. Um, so I just wanted to update you a little bit about that. Um, Eversource seems to be just slow. I thought we would have, we would be a lot further on than we are right now since we almost met about a month ago. Um, so. So Keith, can I just get a recap? So Eversource is gonna buy a mower, boom mower, that mm -hmm. we have an option to buy no. through a lease agreement. Mm -hmm. No. No. Eversource, per in a sense, the town of Waitley purchases a mower under a five-year lease agreement. Eversource makes the lease payment for us. Oh, I guess that's. Yeah, they'll get us, they'll get us the money each year. So why is Eversource? What's in a friend of Eversource? Part of their, the reason they do this is they, in their contract, they provide, they tell us that we have to, you know, under their primary wires and things of that nature, where, where we can. We have to go back uh, 11 or 18, I don't know what the things. They give us specifications on what they want. It saves them a tremendous amount of money because all that undergrowth under their power lines is maintained by the town. They don't have to, in turn, every few years, bring a crew out there and cut brush underneath. Because once you get over guardrail and once you get over um, into ditches and things like that, where they have power lines over above it, towns don't maintain that unless they have this boom mower. Um, we've been utilizing, we've been using this um, now for 15 years. I first started with the town of Irving and was a lead town in my group and then I went to the town of Gill and then Sunderland. So I've been partaking, Waitley's been partaking for 15 years. And so now it's our turn to be the lead town. So, um, so who's, who manages like the maintenance account you said? Is it the lead town does that? Yes. The money will come from all, all the member towns will, will make the one once a year payment into that account which we will then maintain through our accounting. And when would this start? Is it the first um, year or what, what is it? As soon as they can, we can get the, all the signature, everything in order. So we have to come up with 120,000? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Other than maybe, again, if, if we desert, if we want to, again, replicate what we presently have, I may be a few thousand dollars short. That may be what I come back asking for. Oh, okay. And that, that eight thousand dollars is not <clears throat> divided out by the other five. That's what. In Whitley. That's what is still negotiable okay. a little bit. I, I think it would be a virtual nightmare if I had to go back and ask five other towns to come up with say two or three thousand dollars say two thousand dollars in addition to their maintenance because then if they all have everybody has to go back to their top in respective towns and they say well we can't do that until a special town meeting or if one says no okay. timing is bad in that aspect but so, so the eight thousand is for maintenance no the eight thousand would be to to rep when i say replicate the current tractor to get the exact same tractor so to speak that does the same thing Eversource, the amount of money they're giving us won't quite purchase okay. that new tractor. It's a little shy. Of right, okay, so, so Whaley would make up the difference? Potentially, that's a possibility of Whaley coming up with that extra 8,000, we'll use yeah. that number. Then I can purchase the exact same, mm -hmm. same size, everything that we presently have and go forward. Has that happened in the past, other towns? Have 
It's, yeah. it's always tight. It depends. There's other things that some, you know, the, the tractors come with what's, you know, regular agricultural tires on it, which are not necessarily the best for the, for the roads, um, for being on the pavement. They wear out very quickly um, because they're, they're designed, they're softer rubber. They're designed to be working in dirt where we drive them on the highway. They, they wear out um, much quicker. There are other options we have as far as purchasing tires, but again, that adds adds a lot, adds more money too. So, um, like I said, I really hope to. I just wanted to keep you updated on it. I really want to get hopefully some more um, firm numbers by maybe your next meeting. But I'm a little confused why EverSource doesn't just say, <clears throat> "Okay, here's the kind of tractor that's necessary for the job. We'll pay for it." And, Fine. and they and if we go over then they'll say well you're you're you know you you have to make up the difference that's where it's pretty much is right but i mean they should pay for well, the machine to get the job done see the one of the things like without getting too into it is the speed of the tractor to get the tractor we presently have has what's called a creeper gear it goes very very slow mm -hmm. and we're running that mower in around ledge and rocks and very difficult terrain. Yeah. That's where the operator really wants to slow it down. If sure. you're just going along through the plane section, it's just yeah. grass, you can move along a lot faster. The tractor, the, the amount of money that we have from Eversource will not buy a tractor with that creeper gear in it. It's just not enough. And Eversource, and Eversource is saying, well, that's, you know, we're, they, they don't. So basically, they're not paying for the machine to get that will get the job done. We have well, they feel it will. Idea. You know, again, it's um, if you want a creeper, you got to pay for it. Correct. Right. So, but it, we we spend that we could spend out the eight thousand dollars over five years though. Presumably, we wouldn't need it lump sum because what would be. Probably correct paint, because so they, maybe they could. We ever source would give us their. Twenty-six thousand dollars a year, which is the, what they're going to give us. And, we have and if we if we have to put in a couple thousand each year to make up that eight, yeah, you because we're paying the financing. But maybe that's easier for for the for the towns to split it if it's a smaller model. Okay. Or it's just easier for us to pick it up if it's it's not even two thousand dollars. I mean, it's right. eighteen hundred, seventeen hundred dollars over over five years. Yeah. So we could just pick that up yeah. if, if but push out. came so, to shove, right? Yeah. So. All right, well, I'll just keep Yeah, your, just keep going. Keep reimbursed, I don't know. And the other thing that I have um, is, oh, I took them out. Chapter 90 project request um, for uh, chip sealing that we're going to be doing in the later part of June. Um, this will be for Masterson Road. Masterson Road was done around 2001, I think, yeah, 2001 with the strap grant. The condition of the, the pavement up there is, is really, it needs to have something done to it. So we're going to chip seal that surface. And also um, on Long Plain Road from the southerly part on Long Plain Road from the intersection of Christian Lane down to um, Straits Road and then we're to jump over the section that was rebuilt a few years ago because that doesn't need doesn't need it yet but then pick up basically by the old dump and go all the way to the Hatfield Town Line. Um, we did go in in the past week, week and a half ago and um, did some leveling in there to try to take some of the, the ruts out of the southerly end. It was um, that, that section of Long Plain Road um, got a lot, had a lot of ruts in it from you know the vehicle traffic making ruts in it, and so we try we make an attempt to reshape it so that the water will shed to the sides better, and when we go plowing, we can plow it and maintain it better in the winter time. So the project request for Long Plain Road is for thirty three thousand, and the um, Masterson Road is for sixteen thousand five hundred. And, uh, um, chapter 90 wise balance wise um, we're, we'll, we're still got 
um, really not touching this, just get, just getting into what was um, a portion for this fiscal year. Um, I will be writing a project request for um, for the blacktop work that's going to be taking place out on um, Conway Road from the Conway Town Line back towards Poplar Hill Road. That's another road that if you travel it at all, you will see how um, un, unshare, out of shape it is. Um, water sits in the road and um, that will be taking place next fiscal year. Um, also, I still have ample money for set, you know, set aside to still do Egypt Road, which will take place later in the summer months. Now that we have that all situated with our um, the land that has been, been acquired, um, so we're in good shape to get Egypt Road done this year. And then also we will still have some Chapter 90 money to to go along with Williamsburg Road if need be when we have a more firm numbers. I have, um, working with Ty and Bond, our, um, the engineering firm that we're using for Williamsburg Road Bridge, the, the you know, the, the small bridge repair program that we are, we, that we are successful in getting in. I was expecting by today I'd have the more preliminary numbers I haven't gotten them yet, but I'll keep you updated as time goes on with that project too. Just curious, how much service life are you gonna have in chip seal? We chip seal out about every six to seven years. And our, and our versus black tap. Um, you're in a 13, 13 to maybe 50, depending on the somewhere in that range. And um, the, the chip seal is, um, it's, it's just a, so much cheaper than, um, than doing a hot mix overlay. Uh, if, if I had the money, that's all I would do is hot mix overlay, you know, blacktop. But we don't, um, if you travel into some of the places like Amherst, Northampton, some of the municipalities that, that try to do everything with blacktop, they just, they can't keep up with it, and the roads are horrendous potholes everywhere. And maybe, you know, when we chip seal, the roads may not always be the, the, the smoothest, but they're not gonna be filled with, scattered with potholes everywhere. <clears throat> right. well, plus, you're getting more strength if you do that overlay. You're adding strength to it. To a certain, to a certain yes, extent, and that's so why, like, what on the south end of the town, we're on Long Plain Road, where we went through and leveled it up to, to get the ruts shaped up. Yeah. Okay. Almost four for the one, one project. Two. two. Oh, two projects. Yeah. One Masterson Road and one. Okay. Kind of, I mean, one point. So that's all I have. Um, the Williamsburg bridges. Yeah, I was just saying when you were making the signatures, the um, part of the chapter ninety. You know, I'm anticipating having to um, still provide some chapter ninety money to pour the concrete for the temporary structure on the second bridge. Okay. That is the bridge that will be a loaner from you know a, a temporary bridge from Mass DLT. So one bridge will be permanently repaired. The, be the, the one is the second bridge. The one that's closed right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. is the one that that's the second bridge, right? Second bridge. Yeah. That is the one that will be permanently repaired. Oh, okay. The, the next one up or the third one up yeah. will have a temporary bridge put okay. in, of which will be on loan from the state of Massachusetts. And we're looking at this year, are we? I. No, it would no. be by the time we get through all the hoops and hurdles, we've got to go through um, notice of intent. We got to go through with Con conservation commission and stuff. By the time all the things get, I, I don't think that we'll be in the position. But it's a, it's not, it's not out of the realm. And the good, the one aspect is that the bridge is closed, so that if they do have time to start this good. fall. It's not like it's going to be, oh, we got to close the bridge and oh, I see. Yeah. so it's 
we may be able to start. If, if we can, I'm I'm all for it to get the ball rolling, but it'll depend on when we get through all of our permitting. Okay. So who's doing the advertising for the um, bridge for the re, for the re building reconstruction? When we have the, that'll be, you know, we'll be working with Brian and Tom. Tom will do that. Tom will, yeah. Bits. I believe so. I'm not, you know, I'm not quite sure on that. Little time bond, yeah. Time bond will be. Yep. And that's the limit, so what happens if you go, the bids come in high? If they do, then that's, then that's the town's problem. That when they made their preliminary estimate, they felt that when we did the application, yeah. that we could get the job done for the amount of money. The state did the estimate? No, our engineer, oh, Pine Bond. Pine Bond did, okay. Pine Bond came in and did the estimate, presented the estimate, and helped us fill out the application based on the numbers that they came up with. And, and that's something you're comfortable with? Mm -hmm. Okay. At this, point, at this point, I have no <clears throat> reason not to be comfortable. Well, other than compared to other bridges that have been done in town. Well, again, this is this is like a um, a baby compared to uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Very good. Okay. 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 Thanks, Thank Katie. You. Thank you. Uh, it's well, we're a little ahead, of time. but we could go back to. <coughs> um, hi, I'm here with my treasure collector hat on today. I see that. It's lovely. Oh, thank you. Um, as you know, we're part of the Hampshire Insurance Group, Group Insurance Trust. Over the years, the Hampshire Insurance Trust has had reserves that have helped keep premiums down. Um, the, those reserves are dwindling, um, and they're trying to think of ways to still keep premiums down. So one of the things that they would like to do is some plan changes. But in order to do plan changes, the town each of the towns within the Hampshire Insurance Group Insurance Trust needs to vote to accept or adopt uh, Mass General Law Chapter 32B, Sections 21 through 23. Um, and that just lays out the procedure that's necessary to work with the unions to um, get the plan changes taken care of. Presently, what's being proposed is um, perhaps some increases to the um, co-pays that exist now, um, especially uh, through the um, prescription drugs, and maybe adding some additional co-pays to, to things that ha don't have any co-pays presently, um, such as inpatient stays and things like that. Um, no one within the trust really feels strongly about putting in deductibles. Um, so I don't think that that's going to be something that's recommended. Right now, um, we, we really haven't gotten anything to recommend to people. One of the things to keep in mind, though, is that our plan has to at least match or be better than the state plan. So whatever the state has, we cannot add more deductibles or more co-pays than what the state plan shows, uh, which we hopefully wouldn't even think about doing anyways because our plan is always bested the state's plan for, for <coughs> years. So the first thing that each town within the trust needs to do is vote to adopt Mass General Law Chapter 32B, Section 21 through 23, which just lays out how we go about making these changes. Um, being that the plan absorbs so many towns and districts and school systems and everything. Um, agreeing on a plan, the same plan with all the unions, might be a little difficult. So I think what's going to happen is the, plan, the, the um, insurance trust is going to present what they would recommend that the changes be. We bring them to the unions. If for some reason, you know, there's no adjusting though the recommended plan, then we may be negotiating in other ways. Like the last time we raised our, um, or lowered the amount that the town paid for health insurance, um, we had to negotiate with the unions and we came up with a solution to give a, a certain sum of money, you know, per year 
to take away the uh, pain of um, having to pay more for the insurance. So those are the things that we're looking at right now. Um, I wish I had more detail on the exact changes that were going to be proposed, but they were still working on that at this time. But the purpose of, of this vote is just to get the ball rolling. And they, the insurance trust wants everyone, all the participating <coughs> units, to take this vote prior to July 1st. So that's why I'm here. And if it doesn't happen Premium. by one or more of the towns? Either they have the choice of leaving the insurance trust, um, which I don't think is beneficial for anyone because, I mean, the insurance trust has been really good at keeping right. the premiums down and keeping a good plan. Um, so I would hope that they wouldn't do that. Um, as far as... I guess it would matter how many towns didn't, but the, the result would be that the plan would change, or I mean, the plan wouldn't change, but premiums would go up. Right, okay. So, you know, they, you're gonna, people are gonna get hit one way or the other. Uh, probably the, the interesting thing about the proposed changes is those people who use their medical services more are probably going to end up paying more than they are now. Those that are healthy and don't use a lot of services will either be paying the same amount or less in savings from, you know, having a lower premium. But but that's where we are. Um, the trust has tried their darndest to keep things, um, but it's it's also the drugs. The cost of the drugs is what hits the insurance trust the most. They're self-insured. They pay for all of the medications and things. So um, it's it's costly. The drugs are what, what is impacting most health insurance plans. Mm -hmm. So, Who is the trust? They're is part of the Hampshire Regional Council of Governments. It's the Hampshire Insurance Trust. Who, who is it actually? Um, you mean as far as how many groups and yeah, uh, I mean it's like it's the whole group of schools and municipalities. There's schools and municipalities. Right. There's forty, I think there's forty five entities in the trust that and, have the insurance through the trust. And the drugs, the drug costs are going up. Drug costs in general are in going general. up. Um, and it's not like they don't buy generic drugs. Or recommend. We try. Um, we've also tried to convince those people on insurance plans that have the capability to switch to the Canada RX program yeah. mm -hmm. because the drugs are much cheaper. Oh, They're the yeah. same. Mm -hmm. But that's only for um, brand names. Brand name are trust. you our representative to the trust? I am as treasurer. Okay. And who's the head? It is. The head of the COG in Hampshire County, the head of the... Joe Shea is the um, director of the mm -hmm. Hampshire Insurance Trust. Is, um, Todd Ford is the head of the Hampshire... Right, and is Todd involved with this or not really? I, he, he, only that they're the um, top of the umbrella, but Joe Shea runs this ship. Right, okay. So, so the Canada RX only, only applies to brand name drugs, not generic. Right. It's basically those people who are on brand <coughs> names and they brand names are generally what's more expensive right. when you go to sure. purchase. Of course. So in Canada RX has a group of um, a listing of drugs. Not all of them are on it. Not all brand names are on it. But um, you can get them for either no copay, which is Nice, <laughs> or um, it, you know, the, and it's it's a no copay to the employee, but it's also a lo much lower cost sure. to the trust. Sure. So. But they're limited in how much they can get that way. Well, in you know, we're trying to get the word out to all the uh, employees that are part of this program to at least look at it. I mean, there, is, there are still brand name drugs that you can't get through the Canada RX program, so you're, you're paying for those. Yeah. 
but um, you know we're trying to encourage as many people as can get on those to do so. Well, you would think they would. Yeah. Well, it's beneficial for both parties. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I make a public comment? Hi, Jen. Sure. Um, and you are. Hi. I'm Jen Kelly. I'm the building rep for Teachers Union, and as you can imagine, this obviously directly affects those of us who subscribe to the health insurance plan. But my question is, would the board consider holding off on voting on this um, until there is an actual proposal from the health trust regarding changes to the health insurance? Um, I don't know if that's something you consider doing. Well, I, I thought about that, but as I understand what Lynn's saying, and I could be very wrong, we're not losing any control or future decision-making ability by doing this. We're just allowing the process to move forward so we can make a sound decision down the road. Right, right. Is that your read on well, this? Well, I my understanding is that if you vote this in now, there will be less opportunity for public comment down the road, or public input, I should say. I, so we, st I, we still have to go to all the unions and negotiate. And that's no different than you would have to work anyway, wouldn't you, or no? We would have to anyways, yeah. So what would be the benefit then of, of, of accepting a law now when you don't really know what is going to be on the table, I guess? Because it plan? allows you to start the procedure that um, is laid out. Well, I have got the law here, so. I don't, I don't think we can negotiate with the unions if we don't accept this. So, um, I'm, it's a different method of negotiating. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, let me find what it says here. It just, it lays it out so that you have to meet requirements on a schedule. Whereas in when you're negotiating now, you could negotiate for for forever. Mm -hmm. This lays it out that you will do this, 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 and this, and have very specific time frames to it. Um, so I think that this was something that was proposed through the uh, Municipal Modernization Act. That's what changed these uh, the whole standard here. So. My, my usual MO with insurance uh, issues is that um, it's usually the insured versus the insurance companies who are contesting for price changes. The insured want to lower the prices, the insurance companies generally want to raise them in the net right. and to maximize profits. So it's unclear to me who the contesting parties are because the unions and the towns should be together with trying to keep the, the premiums down and the deductibles not there and the co-pays minimized. Right. So why would the unions want to delay something or what? I'm, I'm just not, it seems from what Jen's saying that there's, there's a difference here between what you're saying, when I, I think there's a, it's an unknown. Because, and I, I understand where they're coming from, because we don't know what the, the proposed changes are going to be, okay. technically. So, well, and I think... they are, this is not going to affect that. Is that what you're saying? Whatever um, the proposed changes are, what we might be voting for tonight. The only thing is, is um, if, if we don't vote to do these plan changes, premiums will con continue to rise. So we abdicate our ability to contain the rises? You can even out, you, you can have more, um, try to even out so that your, your premiums, technically the costs need to be less than what we're, less to the average individual when we make these proposed changes than they are now. Because there's supposed to be a savings when these plans go into effect. So that would mean that the premiums have to be considerably lower in order to offset any increase in co-pays or whatever else. 
So there is supposed to be a savings generated if you're following this plan. A savings for the insured. For the, for, yes, or, the, or, or perhaps the trust in general. Which should keep, keep end is, users down. Right, costs right. Down. right. Well, it seems to me we don't have a problem here. I think it's business. just like I, I think it's just the unknown of what those changes are right. going to be, and that's what this. And the, I mean, I'm new to this whole process. So in the past, has this law had to be voted in when the no, situation this is something occurred? With the, um, I think what happened, and the reason why this law was put into effect was because when it came time for negotiations they would get stalled and they wouldn't go anywhere. So with this law, it, it, it establishes a series of steps you have to take within a specific time frame. So nothing gets stalled for months on end in, in, during regular negotiations. Historically, what was the reason for the stall? We never really had too many issues, um, but other communities in the the state had. But what was their beef? I guess, I guess, was it a stalling tactic on the part of the insurance They just couldn't come together in mediation. You know, then you get into the mediation, and that wouldn't work, and it would just be, no one wants to see, I mean, we have an excellent plan, and no one really wants to see that change. They don't, you know, so I, People are trying to protect their own interests when they're voting, you know, trying to negotiate these. Um, well, wouldn't the towns, wouldn't the towns be more in favor of having employees pay more because it would save the town money? Whereas the percentage-wise, but the we are dealing would be with more that. in favor of having their rank and file pay less, which would mean the towns would pay more. Mm -hmm. So there's a contest there. But in this, normally in the percentage game, when you're paying, you know, the town pays 75%, yeah. the mm -hmm. employee pays 25 I would agree with you. But this is different because it's not affecting the 75-25. Oh, okay. It's affecting the plan design, the, the actual design of the plan, the co-pays, that kind of thing. So, so how much the town versus the unions or the employees pay? That's not, not part of this, unless the town wanted to do something at with that at this but point that in time. Has but that nothing to do with but, this procedure. No, that's not what the trust, not this, that isn't what the trust is dealing with on this. They're making plan changes, not percentage changes. But if plan changes don't go into effect, then ultimately it does impact premium. Right. And if premium is impacted, then it does impact both the town right. and the Correct. users. Correct, yes. So that 75, 25 doesn't change, but 75% of $100 no. is less Correct. than 75% of 125 Correct. So it, it, it kind of does, it does potentially it is, impact it down the road if right. we can't come to any kind of an agreement. Right. And because we're part of this large trust, I mean, they can't create, they have to keep the plan design the same for everybody. So it's not like we can go to the unions and say, okay, we will pay, you know, okay, we won't do this copay. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's just one of those that yeah, they have to have a plan that is mm -hmm. equal amongst all the all the departments. So, yeah. so if, if when you go to negotiate with the unions, it's going to be looking at other things. So let's say there are because I don't want to recreate wheels. Let's say there are I'm going to make up a number: fifty communities, fifty entities included involved in the trust. Could be 100, could be 25, let's just say they're 50. And the trust needs this decision done by June, by July 1st. So that they so, Right. Forward. So, how many of the member entities to date have approved this legislation and how many have not approved it? I haven't, we haven't met since they presented this. And they haven't given you any us. updates? No, no on not at this point in time. We're winning, we're losing. We're all, we're all doing it at about the same time. Okay. Because so we, we were just presented with it. Mm -hmm. So we're all doing it at, at the same time. It's not something. So this, 
vote. We, we could take this up the last meeting in June, theoretically, you could. And, and nothing. You wouldn't have your nose out of joint on that, would you? No, but I, you know, I wanted to present it and get yeah. you thinking about it. And good. Well, I think that's good, and I think I think we started to think about it. I know I have, <laughs> and I hadn't before. So I'm I'm all good to think about it some more while I'm still here. <laughs> well, be, you're going to be. Two weeks. Yeah. We uh, make that pressure. 11 days? No. So, uh, no, I, I, I'm not ready to vote on it, frankly. No, I'm, but, I'm not. I mean, I, we're going to have to. Right. But so what, what are we going to gain by waiting two weeks? Are we going to more information? Potentially more information. From who? From Lynn? I can see, else? I can get answers to the questions on how many have passed it so far and that kind of stuff. So. I'd be curious as to who sponsored the bill in the first place. The bill itself? Yeah. It had to, well, it was part of the um, Municipal the Modernization, Modernization Act. Act. Oh, so, so it had to have been little communities or something, or districts. And it was supported by the administration, but it had yeah. overwhelming support by the legislature as well. So it was and pretty the MMA. Yeah. It, it sets up the process for, the, like when it sets up the process for the negotiations between the unions. I don't think it was a terrible partisan thing. It was just let's. Well, I'm always a little skeptical well, and want to learn a little bit about. No, it wasn't insurance companies or anything like that. But no. I think it was to keep things moving. I think it was trying to make it easier to go through the whole process of making changes to the plan okay, well, by setting these time frames and your insurance. They, they set up your insurance advisory committee and the people who need to be on it yeah. and the time frame when everything well, needs as, to take place. As so. a famous politician has known to have remarked not too long ago, who knew health insurance could be so complicated? <laughs> but, but, but that said, I wouldn't mind tabling for until the next meeting to have a That's vote right. on it and hearing maybe from the unions if you all want to get more informed. Um, and, well, you know, and do we have a or whatever the parties involved are, if there's any differences. If not, then let's go do it. Well, I think the Insurance Trust is hoping because they have a time frame to get the sure. the plan yeah, design the and everything yeah. together yeah. and get that out to people. So, but they want to make sure that they have a commitment from all the towns. Sure. To, so, well, they, and by the way, delay does cost money, and we well, don't want to. Yeah, we. You know, yeah, I don't want to drag drag our feet on this. This is the whole thing is mean, about avoiding is. dragging feet, right? So, <clears throat> people can keep their health insurance. Um, but what do, you, what do you say? Maybe um, next meeting we vote on it? Is that okay? okay. You guys? Sure. When is That's fine. June? Next meeting? June 12th. The 12th. Sounds good. Okay. And I'll see if I can find out some more information. Mm -hmm. I know that Frontier is supposed to be voting on this as well, so I can find out if any questions and, and okay. have come up there that people were curious okay. about. Okay, great. So. Well, good. Okay. Thanks, Lynn. Paul? Okay. Well, just a comment. This, to me, sounds very encouraging yeah. because it starts the process much earlier when you think about your own insurance plans and when you're asked to make decisions. And then, all of a sudden, the payer understands what their constituency is in order to go to the insurance company. If, he under if they understand what they have much earlier, yeah. Sounds better. And this is what we should have with the schools. Instead of having the budget right up top and having X amount of time to decide on the budget, this is exactly what oh, I should th happen there. I think, I think participant education is paramount and should be done as, as well and quickly as possible. I know trying to figure out what Medicare was about, I had to call a consultant. Oh, I mean, no, that's, God. When your life should be getting simpler, they it make it more complicated. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so holy, not having Medicare. Well, Med Medicare was passed in the 60s during the Johnson administration, just by the way back. Yeah. Oh, that's not the, the, that's not the information. Yeah. Wasn't it administering Nixon? Okay. No. I, I have one kind of question for Linda, since she's here. Uh, Rutgers retention. Uh, if you received any guidance or anything on, on or gone through the act to see what you can what oh, needs yeah, to be saved we have a whole manual on records retention okay because you know we're supposedly going to be moving the rest of our records from other buildings here and, and if we don't need all of that 
that's the time to well to d dispose of some of that we do have some that can be disposed of that's in the back but we have to ask for permission to dispose of it and we also right. have to keep some more of it until an audit's done um and but most of the stuff that's in the vault of the town hall needs to be saved and brought down here right. Right. that's all um long-term required to be right. saved records right. so the, the reason i bring it up is we had a, a, a county a, assessors meeting last week and the the county board there developed a list of of all they say 85 different items that yep. the assessors keep and it tells you the the retention rate yep. yeah, and there we was have, a form on we there. have a whole okay, manual you, of every uh, department that's right like that. but this was kind of abbreviated on five pages versus 85 pages i guess yes. well it, it's but. all each section yours is probably the five pages from the manual <laughs> that are assessors related it, it's all broken yeah. down into departments all right uh, okay every, so you're yep working on that oh, okay, yeah. that's all. okay it's just having the time to actually do that because you actually have to request permission to destroy records right. and right. um and wait for that permission to come through before you can get, get, get rid right. of it so Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're running late, okay. so we need I'm to move on. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. My apologies to Maya Cherian. Who's not here. Who's not here. And Todd uh, Fry it. Fry it. He's from ECA Solar. Yes. Okay. Wait, please okay. say that again. Todd from ECA Solar. Oh, okay. Instead of. Yep. Okay. And Lynn Benander from Co-op Power. You guys know each other? We do. Okay. Yes. I thought so. Coincidence? Okay, so since Maya's not here, Todd or Lynn or... Um, sure. Uh, Co-op Power runs Vine Groups. We're an energy cooperative owned by consumers, mostly here in Western Massachusetts. And um, we look for good opportunities for customers, for residential users, for small businesses, and for cities and towns. And we uh, found a great deal for how to lower your electric bill uh, with ECA Solar. Do you want to close the door? Sure, go ahead. Or do you want me to be louder? Oh, sorry. That's okay. You can close it. I was amending the other meeting. Okay. Okay. Then you can join two open. meetings at once. Open meeting, we have to leave it open. <laughs> leave it open. No, you, you just have to let them open it up. Well, the door, come on. <laughs> they have to. It's all literal. <laughs> literal. <laughs> I mean, so we. We um, found a, a way that cities and towns in um, our region can save money on their electric bill, reducing your electric bill by 15%. And uh, so we are bringing this opportunity with ECA Solar to you. Yeah, great. 15% <laughs> from our current bill. Yep. And so my name is Todd. I'm the owner of ECA Solar. Um, Maya, who you, you met with recently, is one of our in-house electrical engineers as well as our in-house counsel. Um, yes. So Maya and I met with Brian. Okay, oh, right. right. Um, and so our company, what we do, what we specialize is our niche, if you will, is working with really large industrial rooftops. Um, we've done about 2.6 million square feet of these big rooftops in Massachusetts. Can I show them your book? Yeah. How many megawatts? Um, the, the last batch we did was 16 megawatts. For that, for that same roofing size. On the one roof, or was that multiple roofs? Oh, it's multiple I roofs. I was going to say, but yeah. <laughs> but we do, I mean, this, this roof in, um, the project that we're here for now is a project on the Callaway Golf Building in Chicopee. Okay. And that roof is just a, a slightly under 10 megawatts, at least the area we'll be using. Mm -hmm. um, the system size is, uh, it's around 2.8 megawatts. And um, we just need a home for that power. Where is it going to go? Um, the main issue we've had is that a lot of towns and cities have already bought their fill, if you will. They've already reached their capacity in how many net metering credits they can buy and own to reduce their bill. Um, so um, that's the challenge we're working through and what, what brought us here today. 
So I assume we get a lower kilowatt hour rating, but no SRX. You get the SRX. Correct. We we would get as we pay for all the capital expenses of the system. So in exchange for that, we get the tax credits on the federal government and the state side, the SRX. Um, we're just buying. What we do is we sell a. It's a credit. It's almost like a gift certificate that just shows up on the town's bill every month. And the question is, what discount do you pay? for that credit once it's delivered to you. Um, Are we buying the juice or just the credit? It's just the credit. It's You're not getting any physical electrons from the system. Well, I, I get that because you can't do that from it. Yeah, so when, chick, but. When, the, when the solar array produces kilowatt hours, electrons, and puts them on the grid, yeah. the utility, according to state law, converts that to a net metering credit, right. and that's what you're buying. Right. So it's not an add-on. It is a replacement of our current electricity. I see. Yes, it's an offset. It's a, right. So, so let's the, let's say yes. it's our avoided of, of our kilowatt hours that you produce right. gets taken off our bill. Exactly. So let's say we, we produce five hundred dollars worth of credits on a given month, and you, the town, has a thousand dollars worth of bills. Your net bill to you from Wamiko, aka EverSource. Would be the difference of the right. two in that case, 500 bucks. And the only other question says, well, what do we owe Todd and Maya for the credits we, we just we just received? Um, and so we we go a little bit further. We, we offer towns. Um, we try to treat everyone equally, and we offer two different options. One is just to buy the dollar at 80 cents, so 20% discount. So for every dollar of value we get removed from your bill, you would remit to us 80 cents. Or the other option is to do a fixed price. Um, and so wait, before you, we get 20% of our net metering value? So if you get, for every dollar of credit they put on your bill, yeah. you pay 80 cents. Right, so essentially you remove from your bill. If, if our portion of the bill, so we get 20 cents. If our portion of the bill was eight, it was, had been $100, we, our bill now is $80. Exactly. And your bill to Todd and Maya, to ECA right. Solar, is $80. That's what I'm saying. Yes. So for every you know, dollar. The it stays the same because it's still with Everson, right? right? Exactly. I, I get, yeah. right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the, these, um, these offers are very common now. You've probably seen Relay Power. Everybody's had that come through their email, um, get 15% off your electric bill. Um, so anyway, there's, this is a very common thing right now, and it's short-lived. When, um, when the law changes again in March or so, uh, and we have a new uh, way of doing solar, there won't be net metering credits sold again. So this is this kind of a short window of opportunity. Yes, you'll be grandfathered once you sign on to this. But um, many of the larger cities and towns, Greenfield's already done it, Northampton's covered all of their Pittsfield. electric load, Pittsfield, um, you know, so it's Amherst, it's, there's a lot of towns that have done it, but they're the larger ones. With ECA? Um, no. A lot of our, a lot of our municipal, com com excuse me, customers are in Central and Eastern Mass. Okay. This is the first real big project. We're, we're actively hoping and working to get um, uh, the Yankee Candle roof here. Uh, some friends of ours just bought the building. But um, we haven't been able to get the scale with some smaller buildings out here. So this, is, this is their first Western Mass large project. Uh, is the savings that the town realize directly attached to present electricity rates, or is the 20% regardless of the rate that a never source is charging? It it, it's regardless of the rate. Yeah. So, so if all of a sudden our bill drops from 100 to, I want to do simple math, 50. It's going to be 20% less than 50 as opposed to 20% less than 100. Yeah, so what, essentially what you're buying from us is, again, these, we call them sort of utility gift certificates. And so what you pay, let's say you have a competitive supplier that has a lower rate or something. So a kilo, comparing it on a kilowatt hour basis is an apples to oranges. You really just want to look at the dollar value of that gift certificate and what you're paying for that dollar against the, you know, compared to its face value. And when electric rates increase, the value of the 20% off is going to be more. And if they decrease the value, the 20% will be less. Be less, but it's still 20%. That's right. 
and it has nothing to do with our use. We well, don't have to, that's going to no minimum or maximum use that. Yeah, so that we we have um, we know what the system is going to produce, and it's up to you know any given town or city to tell you tell us how much they want, and that's what we'll go. We'll say, hey, Todd, I'm only interested in buying X amount of this. I don't want Y, or I want even more than that. So you're going to get a portion of the total kilowatt right. hours produced. But if our, our usage, shows. if our demand decreases because we shed our building or mm -hmm. what have you, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's okay. So we're still not. I don't want to be buying electricity in 2017 amounts when in 2019 I no longer need that much electricity, but I'm still buying that much electricity because that was the contract that we signed in 2017. So which is yeah. So so two things. The the volume essentially is fixed. You you decide how much you want. If you want to put in a a 30 percent buffer, if you want to put in you know 50 percent buffer, whatever it is. However conservative you want to be, that's a decision you can make. The other thing I'll add, which has become very common across the state, is that um, you could assign those credits to another town or another municipality or whatever you wanted to do. That's become quite common in the horse trading. That's like being a sublease. Yeah, effectively. Um, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, you shouldn't buy what you, what you don't think you're going to need. Um, and have a safety buffer in there, whatever it is you decide. Oh, no, I literally am thinking if I need a... And I'm going to go back to kilowatts. Yeah. Kilowatt hours. Yeah. If I want, if I need 100 kilowatt hours today, mm. but tomorrow I only need 80 kilowatt hours, I don't want to be stuck with 100 kilowatt hours. I don't blame you. Yeah. And it sounds like I would be. Well, no, you have choices to assign them to another account. I know, but no, I you just decide up. You just decide up front. I, I to buy instead of buying 100 or 80, buy 60. But it is a 20-year agreement. Right. So we have a 20-year lease, we have a 10-year loan, and we have, uh, you know, we have a long-term liability. You're hedging, and we're, yeah, I get it. We, we just need a long-term power partner. And oh, that's, I think what you'll find of all the c cities and towns that have done these are all, almost all 20 years. Um, I think we, before we decide on this, we've got to hear what we're getting from our other sources here in town that are proposing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not comfortable agreeing to this without knowing what we're going to have right next door here that said they're going to offer the town a certain percentage as well. This is way too premature to act on. Well, also... Well, we're, we're just here to talk about it. We're yeah. Not, yeah, we're, we're not asking to sign it. I know, but um, even... Uh, so we, we met with Brian. We're meeting with you now. And then we're interested in hearing what you want as next steps. But there's a little um, bit more to the presentation because there's the, there's the fixed discount opportunity there's also a fixed rate opportunity which would save the town more likely over time right. because electric rates are expected to increase mm -hmm. Todd has some information about what that savings would look like we understand you have another opportunity with Amoresco and so next you know hmm? next, 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 next well and potential opportunity and yeah. so um, you know whatever you need to do to compare those we're, we're happy to what what is co-op powers role in this? Why? We're, again, we're running a buying group that helps cities and towns get access to some of these opportunities. So you're like a sales mm -hmm. yep. rep for ECA? Yeah. Okay. Do you rep other? Yep. We've got some other projects that we're working on also. Um, but with, I mean other companies? With another ECA. company. Oh, yep. okay. Yeah. Uh, Callaway, they're still in business? Sorry, yeah, the, the yeah, they are. They're, I, my understanding is they're owned by uh, their parent company is like an Asian private equity group. I want to say Korean. They don't own the building anymore. They lease it. Oh, so it, it doesn't matter. We're, we're effectively a tenant of the roof. We're uh, leasing the roof space. So you would lease the roof space for 20 years, and whoever owns the building doesn't matter. You've right. got your lease. Okay. Right. Yeah, it runs with the property. Okay. Yeah. So the the pricing that um, ECA is offering you, I think, is is the best the, of the best. That it's the best that I've seen out there, and I've been doing a lot of research on this. So I would love for you to have that information yeah. and go research your other opportunities. Um, sure. But if you could, if we could figure out, if you could understand what the next steps are with Todd so that if you want to pursue it, you'll understand it's not gonna it's not gonna be out there forever, right? right. So 
Um, so time is of the essence, and if you understand what the process is, I think that would be useful. But this agreement, this is only being proposed to the town, not households. This Correct. Like both. This you, you, you talk town and then you say household in here. Group of households, I don't know what you're... Is that, is is that, the, uh, is that the other company's proposal? No, in your, in your in this memo it talks about we're going to buy groups of households, nonprofits, and municipalities to reduce costs. That's what Co-op Power does. So is this what you're offering here? This is, is just this? municipal. We, our our company point? doesn't work with households. Now we're, we're institutional. Um, okay. So if, 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 okay. if it's 500 That's households in Waverly got together as a, as a buying entity, you wouldn't deal with that and that's fine I'm just I, it's it's not our business we've never okay, done it before fine. yeah um, so that's co -op, what co-op that would be does. what you got right yeah and I, again don't be wrong I think households should do that but yeah okay so um, how long is this offer on the table um, we're getting our entitlement from the utility um, next month in June um, so we, we're basically ready to construct and build once this is figured out um, we um, we would like to be you know have our marriage partner. I don't know if it's legally binding agreement, but we would like to have this figured out in the next thirty to sixty days. Are, are we on the hook if you know we all know that S Rex at the state level or tax incentives at the federal level are as good as the next Congress mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. General Assembly, as the case may be? Um, what happens if the S Rex market? falls into trouble. Or if the, and I did a lot of work on the, 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 the last federal solar. Yeah, the ITC. If, if, that, yeah, if, if, if that goes away, what happens to it? Um, so we, we assume all capital risk for the project. Okay. Um, and uh, in, including all the construction costs, which are really significant for a project of this size. Um, you know, if, if something were to happen to any solar group, it's not just ours. Of course. Our secured lenders would step in and take ownership of the asset. Um, they obviously, there's a strong, you know, this project produces, I think, over three and a half million kilowatt hours a year. So there's a strong incentive to make sure that it continues to produce yeah. and um, deliver to the customers of record. Um, whether or not we're in, in or not, I can tell you, I have personal guarantees <laughs> to make sure that that doesn't happen, and we have a way of hedging our SREX to mitigate that risk. Um, as far as the tax credits, that's all on day one. So the moment it gets switched on, we're entitled to those 30%. Right, you get those right? Yeah. If, if we agree with this, what's our commitment once we sign on? Are we committed for six months, a year, or 20 years? 20 years. And it's 20 years. And how can we opt out any time? Or is it work locked in for 20 years? Or so? No, we're committed to you and you're committed to us for 20 years. Um, if we were somehow in default to the agreement, so it's common for us to provide minimum output guarantee. So we, we often provide 80% of what you desire. We're going to guarantee that we deliver that even, you know, uh, we can't guarantee weather, but we're comfortable with that. Even if you're not in business anymore, yep. you're still guaranteed that. Yep. Yep, and so uh, you know, again, if if, for, if any company were to go out of business, the the lender would take over. And we work with Northern Bank and Woburn. Um, so so our costs won't go up. They won't be affected by that. Yeah, um, we. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the net metering program has been wildly <laughs> successful. I'll send you guys a list of, of local towns and cities that are doing this, and um, we th we think you'll be very quite pleased with it. Um, this is a mature project, it's a large project, so depending on the appetite of the town in terms of dollars for your annual electricity expenditures, um, we can dial it in. I think if anything, we're going to have too much here. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, we, we understand that, so um, um, we don't have to... Do it all in one fell swoop. It can be other municipalities that join the party. I, I, I was assuming there were other municipalities involved. I was yeah, you know, we're, we're talking to several. We're trying not to talk to too many so that we don't build a lot of expectations. We'd it's like to. Better to date more than fewer. <laughs> so is this already built? 
Uh, no, we, we need to get our, our revenue under contract first, our power purchase or commodity revenue, and then we build it. They need these agreements with cities and towns before they can build it. But do you have local uh, city of Chickadee agreement to build this? Yep, so it's, it's an industrial building. And this is an, the reason, the old reason we do rooftops is because A, people don't like ground mounts anymore. A lot of neighbors and a lot of towns are very upset. But to put solar panels on an industrial building is an accessory use. Uh, we have, so it's just a ministerial building, an electrical permit. It's a short form. Uh, we have our structural done, we have our layouts done. And, um, but to answer your question, we have not pulled our ministerial building or electrical yet. So what's the building you're putting it on? It's the Callaway Golf Building. 20%. Which is what? It's 425 Meadow Street yeah, in Chicago. It's, it's the whole complex. It's what kind of uh, business do they do? Golf. It's called Callaway Golf. Oh, okay. Um, does Callaway get any of the juice or are they? The, the main benefit, the answer, short answer is no, they're not getting any power. Um, we are replacing their whole roofs, so they're they're, nice quite, <laughs> they're leaking and they're. It's a very it's a large capital expense. Um, it's a it's a problem for their business that we're solving. For this. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't gone to China. <laughs> Stop. Okay. So there's the 20% discount that you have as a as an offer. There's also a fixed price. Um, so that you can kind of lock in your price for electricity for this portion that you sign up for. You can take a small portion and you can do your other project too, or you can take a larger portion. You have a lot of choices here, um, but I do think you'll find these, what they're offering rates are very um, comparable to anything else you'll see. Um, this is a, you know, a more local company. It's a more local regional effort um, so it might be something you're interested in supporting on that level. Uh, in order to get involved, there are three steps. One is just registering with the DPU mm -hmm. um, so that you get a number and you can buy net metering credits. You have to disclose the contracts that you um, assign um, just so they can be keeping track of that. Uh, so that doesn't have anything to do with who you sign up with, but we would encourage you to empower your administrator to get that registration in place. It takes a while, so it would be good to get started if you're thinking about doing this with anyone. Sounds like you are, so that would be a good thing. Maybe you could decide tonight. The second thing is this particular project needs a host town municipality. It doesn't require a lot of obligation, um, it, but it just allows them to kind of get started with a lot of things with the state around interconnection. And so if you can look at the host agreement and see, does it require you to make a commitment to buying, to purchasing power, but it helps get the door open and it also reserves you a spot that if you do choose, Todd will make sure you get an opportunity to buy in, even if City of Springfield says, I want the whole thing, you know, in two weeks. Well, we've been, we've been meeting with them a lot. So anyway, you know, there are other larger larger cities and towns. Is there a financial benefit being the host community? Uh, there's a benefit in that you are reserved. No. I get that. Is there added? There, there's no buying or selling. It's it's a non-economic agreement. I just. Uh, fair ask. question. Yeah. yeah, no, for us, it's, it's basically, uh, uh, it's, it's a way of notifying the state that, um, we, are, we, the town, and our city are sponsoring this project. We're not agreeing to buying anything, but as far as it relates to net metering, we're signing off on it. Um, each town and city is allowed to do up to 10 megawatts of net metering. Um, obviously, a lot of towns and cities may only have an appetite for one of those, um, but uh, you know, it, there, there are caps. Um, so. A, the town of Whateley could, you know, uh, sponsor up to 10 megawatts of projects. Even if it's only uh, purchasing a fraction of one megawatt, they're still allowed to sponsor those as far as their allocation that the state gives them for net metering. Okay. So anyway, you might, so registering with DPU, maybe consider being a host to help this project get started. And then the third is looking at the rather significant contract um, that we share with Brian that 
um, where you how decide mm -hmm. how much you'd like to purchase if you'd like to purchase. So is, is DPU approved this co-op? Um, ECA is not a co-op, so it's, it's just a for-profit business. Right. Okay. Um, has, uh, I'm not sure what the... Co-op powers is a separate, a separate organization. They're just... Well, okay, okay. well either one does and this DPU have to approve it or accept it or whatever the... Um, yeah, so, so two um, things. Uh, one, the town has to register with the DPU just to get an ID number so they can track who's doing what in that metering world. And that's free. It only takes 24 hours, and you know it's a one-page form. But the second thing is that once the contract is signed, the town would submit a copy of that to the DPU, to the Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources, and to the AG's office. It's just a submission thing, just so they can have it on their files. Um, and um, the, the biggest thing there is they just want to make sure towns are saving money. <laughs> So if you're buying a dollar for 80 cents, you know, just sort of a check the box. Um, that's all. Okay, great. So I think we ought to register with the DPU. That's harmless, yeah. And then I go from there. Maybe convene the energy committee. Oh, you didn't stay on? You stay on, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say I was gonna stay on, but I think we ought to convene it. Well, that would mean you would be, if, if we convene the energy, is Nat still on, or yeah, would, yeah, it, would I be still. convening me? No, it would be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I'm sure input from Joyce, who is masterminded our other pilot program with okay. Citizens Energy. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. 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 You want to see you when? It's a nice coffee table book. When are you going to go up to oh, the Mass Mutual? When are you going to get the Mass Mutual? <laughs> Oh, we love to. We love to. We're, we're doing a lot of parking canopies. No, forward. that's a good idea. We, we look down on that building every day. And I know. Why is there solar on that? Yeah, we we really like to get the energy from the building, but we're close. So. Now that MGM owns that Mass Mitchell building. That's true. Yeah. No, the, the casinos, for whatever reason, they don't seem to want us on their rooftop. <laughs> no, I've got two guys with that. Anyway. Thank All you right. So All right. Thanks, Todd. Yeah. All right. So, moving on to public comment. Thank you. To the public. Okay. Dan's not here. Okay. No comment. <clears throat> District Local Technical Assistance, or DLTA, as we like to say. Economic Development. So, if you recall, we... This has been on the back burner a little bit. To get through town meeting, but we received a grant from uh, Procog to help us do an economic development project. This is money that's provided to Procog from the state, right? To assist municipalities, and we put in a couple of applications, and they said, "Well, if we can help you out with the economic development project. Now we need to figure out what we want to do." Okay. Um, yeah. Based on the on these four four bullet points in potential projects, this is what we had talked about in my conversations with with Jessica about that as well. Jessica, which is the one of the planners there. Does it have to be limited to these four bullet points? Nope. And let's see where is uh, that in our package. I mean, I want to turn the center school into incubator space, but you know, that's just me. The, Probably right. I don't, the, the bottom two, I, I, don't think we, I don't think we need assistance in the bottom two, I, I don't know. No, I, mean, I, I actually think four is something that is a lot of, it's pretty involved. Especially if it's a region, if, 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 if we need help regionally. Well, that's going to be, well, East Whaley School, that Frontier, we don't own that. We don't own East Whaley School, right, I mean, it's, yeah. and, and I hope we never do. Yeah, so I don't think we need to look at it. We use no. Well, the center school. I mean, I think this. Well, the one that jumps out to me is the center school. If the town hall is moving forward, that building is going to become vacant in the next yeah. year, year, year and a half. And then, I think one of the challenges we're going to have is the zoning challenge. Right. I'm not yeah. sure that it's zoned for yeah. much else. And the Demio, Demio How is it zoned now? I think it's probably uh, residential. 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 Yeah, residential. 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 <laughs> I mean, you could go to CBA, but that's the roll of the dice. Um, okay, town property, sewer commercial development. Well, DeMaio, 
one of the housing committees looking at that. It's been already marketed in many different ways for five to eight years already with no interest, so I, I don't see us gaining any more. Maybe we ought to look at the center school building then, just uh, focus on that. Development. I mean, 510 commercial quarter, my goodness, it's swampland to the east. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, and not too far off limited, the road. Yeah, it's limited to what, what's available. Uh, well, I mean, if we looked at the center school, what are we looking at? Um, can we sell it, basically, is the question? Okay. Or is there something we could do with it for the town? If so, what? You know, I look at that place and I think it'd be, you, you could turn it into two condos and you could have nice, and it's a historic building, and you know, if you were in Boston, that place would go for quite a lot of money if well, you condoized it, but I'm not sure that the market's here. There has been some interest among a resident or two of buying the building. And it's zoned residential, so you could, you know, a couple condos. I don't know how much we get for it, but that's something that FERCOG could tell us, or we could... Well, but, uh, do you need a study to do that? I no, you need yeah, a commercial real estate agent yeah. to say, okay, here's what you get for this building. I mean, and, and number one just doesn't excite me really at all. Well, farm stands. No, just, jeez. Yeah. Uh, or anything else we could, or anything else. Anything else. Do we need to decide this now? No, we don't. We don't need to decide it now, but they're looking to get started on it no, relatively the, soon. The other thing we, we, we talked about in some way with finance committee was was uh, looking at a, um, a facilities management plan. Right. Would that fall under I don't this? Think, not if it's municipal. No? No. Let's think about it. Let's just sort of put our thinking caps on. Not if it's municipal. So, well, this what are all these if they're not municipal? Yeah, but well, you, well, you're talking about maintaining our improvements to maintaining our municipal buildings? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, we want to avoid, as we said in the Finance Committee meeting, we want to avoid being hit by, oh, we need a new roof all of a sudden. Yeah. Well, we should have done but that. I'm not sure that's economic yeah. development. Oh, I'm not sure either. Be related. Okay. Yeah, it's it's, related it's something we need. Development. So, you know, if, if they can give us something we need, I, I don't care what it is. No, I, I just wonder what, I just think that the, okay. the grant, it's an economic development based grant. They want you to create money in town. I want to create more money in town. Sure. So we'll save money by doing that. Then we can work with the schools on more than spend. Well, or, or with the schools on a marketing plan for the whole shooting match. Or a marketing plan for for the, oh, for yeah. the town hall. Community center. As a community center. That's a cool idea, actually, because it doesn't exist and it needs to exist. Yeah. We need to figure out, I mean, when this thing becomes a cultural center, yeah. what does that mean? How do we market it? How do we take advantage of that asset? How does, how does it create a little bit of revenue? Maybe people start going to the way well, and, and, and I, 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 I like that idea. I, I really like that idea. I think we've talked about this many times in, in, in passing. And, and we've talked about converting the center school into a place. Like, uh, you know, deli, cafe, yeah. market, somewhat. Pub. Uh, or pub. Yeah. And, and so to connect that with Quan Quan, the way we end, the town hall, community center. Sort of, right, and economic we have, development center. We have a little development center going on. Yeah. Um, Could, is there any, is there any um, desire, I guess, impetus to approach mm -hmm. maybe a current producer of alcohol in town to, to maybe move? Move away. Like Hitchcock beer. Perhaps. For instance. For instance. Maybe, maybe a permanent home for them there, rather than maybe they're... Uh, yeah. They don't see that as a permanent home? You have to get change of use. I don't think so, because, Permanence. well, I mean, right. how big can you get? You know, and they, they, and they're, they're expanding. Right. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. your, your point is accurate. You would have, have to get a change. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. But, but you have to do a lot of bells and whistles. You know, stuff. But, crow. I mean, but you can do that. I mean, you right. know, it's, it's work, but. Well, and, and also. Also, I have time on his hands. I, <laughs> what? You don't have time on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to be empty time. So, uh, you know, I, I've been thinking it would be good to talk to, have a tri-town economic development area where you had like Sunderland, Deerfield, and Waitley. We have this beautiful Mount Sugarloaf in between us all. We have Yankee Candle. We have Mike's Maze and other assorted restaurants around town. And to create a mini chamber of commerce like Entity, yeah. the Tri Town Economic Development right. Center, or a bid or whatever, and yeah. put together some tourists. And from I mean, a lot of people drive through here at ski season, mm -hmm. foliage oh, yeah. season, you know, bikers, bikers, yeah. bicyclists, bicyclists, say. bikers, whatever, and make this more of a destination. You got Quan Quan Farm, sure. Uh, you know, I mean, we got a lot to offer. I think downtown Whitley has a lot of potential to be built. Um, a destination with uh, the new town hall. Yeah. Take advantage of our assets. Right. Exactly. And, we create yeah. a, and if we did something with that little school, yeah, oh. that 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 was pro right. pro growth, growth, tourism, something whatever. Small. I mean, you'd have a, a small walking town. Right, because what we have right now, I, I got the library in there. The library. I hate to say it, right? So what we have right now is a is a throughway. Yeah, that's right. We have people driving from Connecticut. <laughs> well, I was thinking more the Williamsburg, Haydenville area, over to Amherst and back on a daily basis. We've done car counts before. It's huge traffic. Huge, and you think I mean the biggest tourism time is the holding the seats in here uh, throughout the whole state. And you think you've got Quan Quan Farm with everything they have to offer. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, you already have the Waitley Inn, and we're going to have the town hall. The town, the town home, whatever. What, what, was, what was that new name? The community Center. Yeah, I'm still know. calling it Town Hall Emeritus. Town Hall oh, Community Emeritus. Center. It's very and, academic. And if, if you yeah. plugged one more in there, You'd literally have yeah, this little yeah. walking area. Well, we got the post office building. Or, I don't know how long they're going to attract be. young people to the mm -hmm. and, and literally make an incubator space. Huh? Dude, I mean, be, let's be creative. So, I like the, the 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 town hall area concept connecting with center school yeah. and figure out that corridor. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, there's a project for Furcock. Yeah. It seems to me. There you go. Make it happen. So, so that that's a little bit more broad than sort of a mark. Is that more broad that's than the marketing, marketing plan? plan for the no, town that's hall? a marketing plan. That's for Waitley. For Waitley. So, so, see, I would argue talking about a business plan or marketing plan. I would argue that or the both. marketing plan, a, a, a solid marketing plan. I've written plan. a couple of them in my life. Isn't just focused on the footprint of that facility. It is focused on the broader impact area. So. While it's a marketing plan for the 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 the, the community center emeritus, yeah. that does encapsulate what do we do with an asset that is three hundred yards away. Yeah. yeah. So it, it is all wrapped together, because if 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 we do if, if we don't look at center school, excuse me, Marilyn, I'm sorry. That's okay. If we don't even look at center school, are we minimizing the impact we can have for town hall emeritus? I think we are. I do too. Okay. But I, yeah, I think it would be good to look at the center of town, but I think we also need to build on and use what was already been studied there. Conway School Design more, did more so aesthetics and, and traffic movement and whatever. And then, then Keith is, uh, is in the middle of doing something for complete streets to improve the street network there. So if you could take that, the Conway School of Design, and I ask them, well, how would that fit in to improve mm -hmm. flow and business and attractions for, mm -hmm. 
for the buildings in the center of town. Mm -hmm. right. While we maintain yeah. the rural care. It's all yeah. fit together now, it's all piecemeal, it's all by itself. Well, it is all piecemeal, and, and, it's, and it's, it's more of a, yeah. you know, the, the, the bringing together yeah. is more of a mindset than right. anything else. Right. And you create that mindset by connecting the needs yeah. of each of these yeah. little fragmented places, and, and I, I, I think we're set up for it mm -hmm. myself. Um, and you combine that with you got three manufacturers, three retailers in town that are retail manufacturing. I mean, you got you know you got the tea guys, you got the Yankee Candle, you got the beer place. Um, we got Quan Quan up on the other side. I mean. Get the Whitley Inn? Yep. Oh, absolutely. Of course, I mean, they're South Florida. Florida. They're a linchpin. And you got a lot of organic farms. I mean, and you got a lot of organic farms. That's the other, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, somehow, how do we bring that, bring that together? Right. As long as we don't, we're not just focused on the agricultural piece, it's an asset that we need True. to leverage. True. But we can't just be fixated on the agricultural no. piece. It is, no. how, do we, how do we leverage that? How do we maximize that while we're exploring other economic pieces that could fit nicely? Mm. So I like, the, I, like the, I like the Hitchcock yeah. concept. Of course, we haven't talked a bit about it, but. No, but uh, you know, I'm, I, I can't sound this. Talk about a cool brew pub. Yeah. I mean, no parking. Yeah. Well, well, you know, it's got, it's it's got, got, got a little little here. Yeah. They've got more parking where yeah. they are. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Then it's all <laughs> But you, you'd almost need a, a, I guess a committee or a group to, to get involved with all of this. We, we don't have any, any committees now on there, right? Are there like planning or. No economic development. No, are we discussing yeah. having an idea, moving an right. idea forward so that, is it FERCOG? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going to pick the ball up right. and, and try to try to make this, try to give it momentum. Right. And then maybe we have to, maybe part of the recommendation is to create a temporary downtown right. revitalization, just, you know, yeah. whatever. Right here, district or something, yeah. And they may say, they may come back and say, well, you need some kind of a entity in town to try to, to help drive this. Whatever. And with Paul having that kind of time. Yeah. And the exactly. Watermelon Wednesdays is the midweek attraction. Watermelon well, and Exactly. <laughs> watermelon Wednesday is going to be a fixture of the town hall in Paris. Yes. Well, we know that. Yeah. We know that. Um, I, I still <laughs> like the three town concept because. Each of these towns is very low density and spread out, but they've all got their features. You could, you and if we Deerfield? Could, could, yeah, Deerfield and, and Sunderland and us. And maybe even Conway, I don't know. But you know, if if we came up with a with a brand for that area, it would it would help everybody out in all those areas. Yeah. And it would make for it would make for a substantial presentation of places of interest, as opposed to a small town with three or four places of interest. Well, I like the incubator, right? I really do, because we need young people in this town. This would bring young people, and we're seeding the incubator space to Greenfield and Northampton. We're dead set in the middle. Yeah, yeah but the young people are in Northampton. If, if you, right. Let's bring them here. It's a good the, drive. The concept is good of all they ride the, other, bicycles. the other towns. People but, use incubators. But I think you're going to get drawn into the Yankee Candle and the Butterfly Place as the major attractions today. And how do you add others, they are, but others, others to that? His, his, but we his, piggyback his, off of that. We gain from associating with. If that. you but, think about, if you think about tourist towns, the tourist towns that work and that are, and that are successful are those that allow participants to walk around. Deerfield is not a walk. Deerfield does not offer that. Now, oh, they, old Deerfield. They, old Deerfield, Deerfield yeah. yeah. But South Deerfield, no. 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 They could be, but it's way down, way down the road. Yeah. We already have a little town that, I'm not saying you're going to spend the weekend, but we, we have the capacity to afford people. They come up, 
of dinner from the way we in, maybe walk across the street to maybe there's a concert going on. Or play or something. Or play. Or maybe walk down the road to uh, maybe Quan Quan Farm and buy some whatever. And then maybe across the street to the little brick schoolhouse, um, a fine, yeah. a fine IPA. But then no, you're, no, I don't know. Then you're 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 focusing on the Waitley or the center of town, more no. so than in three towns. I I think we're we're going to be the little the the, the, the tail wagging the dog here. I'm not sure that I I, I wouldn't agree with that necessarily. Uh, yeah. I I don't think this region has has successfully figured out how to market itself. Well, no. we don't have a brand identity. No, nope. um, we're known for Yankee Candle, but. But if, if, if we could help with the brand identity and to make Waitley an attractive place, and it already is an attractive place, but to yeah. mm -hmm. enhance that brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, again, we're doing Fur Cobb's work for us, for them right now. Yeah. I, 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 but I think we're excited enough about this. Yeah, I do. Much more than the other yeah. bullet points. Well, yeah. why, why don't we ask? Cog, if these other towns have suggested anything like that, um, or would, or if not, I guess if they'd be interested. Or, why don't they? Why don't we have them, Jennifer, whatever, Jessica, come to our next meeting and say, look, this is what we're excited about. Yeah. What can you do with this? Yeah. Right. I'm more excited about the 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 the, the emeritus center school thing than I am about yeah. the. Yeah. See, I don't well, think we can do anything with. Well, I mean, I. I think the it's idea of I, the idea of getting together is a wonderful idea, um, but I, I I I see the difficulty in it. Oh uh, yeah, you know the whole skim like thing. Oh yeah, it, you know th there's that. So control what you can control, right? And what we can control is we can't even control it completely, but to some extent, right. Waitly. And then if if and then if we get that off the board. Then we become an attractive partner. Right. Then we don't need cards right now. Then right. we would have cards. Yeah. I, that, I was about to say the same thing. It just yeah. right. Right. All right. That, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Can Jessica come to the next meeting or see if she can? Yeah, I'll ask her to put together. Well, no, I'll come to the meeting first. So we have her put together so it'll yeah. work. But I'll have to come first. And our next meeting is the twelve. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we got to move on here. Okay. That was good. Uh, Town hall project update. Speaking of. Speaking of. of my notes um you know we did not receive the uh, cultural facilities grant did we get feedback i requested it this morning i got the official letter today um so i have not seen it yet and there's, there's no appeals process they're compiling it no. what who did get it there was only one municipality out of 61 yeah who applications. i think it was new bedford so what kind of organizations did receive it just non -profit, non -profit, non profit arts, theater. There's one in Asheville. What was the one? That's the double edge. Oh, double, edge. double edge theater in Asheville. They got a chunk of money. Um, it, it was mostly non profits. Oh. Um, so the state didn't support the municipalities? It was one out of 61. And there was New Bedford? I think it was New Bedford. I'll have to double check. But. Wayland Museum. Wayland Museum. <laughs> Which is wonderful. It was something. But. Yeah. Call me Ishmael, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Emily Dickinson, or you got your. Uh... Okay. So, what other update do you have on Town Hall? Um, you have a. You have a picture in your packet of a parking lot. Um, of a parking lot. A proposed, yeah, parking. proposed parking lot. Um, well, Fred, jump in if you want to. I'll because I'm speaking for the Municipal Building Committee, but... Okay, what you want me to do, I can do this. Where, all right, go where, ahead. Where this all came about was was the issue of the septic systems among the three buildings. And there's three separate se septic systems. Tanks and bleach fields for three off three buildings, post office likes and town hall. They currently exist. Currently exist, all working, functioning. And, okay, for one, we, we've heard from the Smike's house that, that this could be potential problems with the tank because there's parking on it. Uh, Jones Woodset proposed parking on top of the tank, and we're kind of saying, uh, no way you're going to do that. Uh, Why not? 
it's you, not a safe measure to do that. The septic design people saying you shouldn't park on top of a tank. Uh, okay. And and the other thing are the parking from the well the, the the septic system from the post office went diagonally in the back of that building right. towards the corner of the existing town hall, which took away the handicapped parking, all that parking there. So so if you left that in place there, you wouldn't have any parking here. And right now the, the town property ends right here. This is the building where no, we're taking down the building here. So there would be no parking in the back and we have to have four spaces for smikes. So what the plan is to is to divert the post office septic into the town hall tank, septic tank. Oh, that makes sense. And eliminate the post office septic completely. Board of Health and, and septic engineers kind of agreed with that. Sounds good. And who owns that that property? The building, the building owned by historic society. I get that, but the land the town, is owned the by the town owns the parcel of land. The land, right? And historic society is in agreement so far with us doing that. Okay. So it means we can be. eliminate the post office tank and post office leach field, which gives us this parking in the back. And the other option is looking at. Uh, either buying or changing the easement for land the, on the north side of that, that barn that's behind. The Caldwell the land, yeah. yeah. The Caldwell land. Uh, the I, yes, that? I initiated the, the conversation with her a couple of weeks ago and, and she was agreeable to talk to us and listen and, and see what we proposed. Uh, this is what we kind of proposed to her, uh, Brian, myself, and, and John Robleski visited her last week and proposed this to her. And we have two options of either changing the, all this is over an existing easement. There's an easement that goes to the septic, uh, that goes to leach field down the hill. So this is, is basically over the easement, which is just for septic. So if we can change the easement to allow parking, we can do that on her property that's adjacent to the barn. The other option is for the town to buy this property, this parcel, 1,400 square feet from her. So we did change the deed for for that parcel plus her parcel. She still would be minimum, still comply with the minimum square footage for the parcel. So we kind of left that proposal to her last week and we're waiting to hear what she has to say. Uh, to make it more Amenable to her, we've offered to cut down the trees. There's a row of, of trees right on the north side of that barn. They're pretty high. We've got an estimate from Keith on what to do. On the north side of which barn? That right. behind the town garage. The, behind one, that town the, hall. the one that's coming down. That one that's coming down. Okay. There's a bunch of trees there because the town, that barn would come down anyway. If we didn't do anything with her property, that barn would come down and she'd have the trees there and the brush under the trees. It's nothing fancy to look at. It's no, it's, it would be about an eyesore. Uh, so we kind of said, if you agree to, to either sell or, or change the easement for the town here, we would cut down them trees and put up some, a fence or some kind of screening on the north side of the parking lot for her. Good. And so that's how we left it. We wait to get an answer, an answer from her. Looks good. On that, so uh, and what Brian is saying if either easement or purchase would require approval at town meeting, right? At a town meeting to do that. Yeah. So we're hoping that, that you know September we could do that. October the latest. Uh, where we stand with the rest of the project is we gave Jones Woodset our, our kind of final comments on the plans and specifications. Oh, early May, and we told them we're, we're dealing with the, the landowner here for additional parking, and also we want some changes in the front and the parking, so, and the septic, and we said once we finalize that amongst ourselves, we will send that to you and you can finalize the plans. Okay. Uh, we're hoping to do that in sometime next month in June, 
and and then they could develop the final plans and specs for advertising, which we're hoping would be in uh, what I had September, I think August or whatever I had scheduled for August. Tentatively, yeah. Tentatively for for August, uh, contractors starting in September, and completion in next April or something like that. Uh, we're meeting with the building committee next Monday to talk about some of these items and I think one of the things we need to decide on is is well decide or inform everybody that has stuff into town hall that it's time to clean out is there still stuff in there yeah well yeah, there's, that, stuff, there's, the there's stuff that's gonna I guess come back there there's chairs and tables and maybe some desks or whatever that need to be removed completely uh, and then come brought back nine months later. So uh, that or or files and stuff and cabinets, well, office furniture. Yeah, uh, furniture. We got to decide where do we want to put that. Here was was a good place, but we may not have that space available. So we got to look either center school or some other place. Rent these pods. I, I don't know. Uh, but there's still a lot of paperwork, books, and stuff in there, not only in the vault, but in the closets. Santa school seems like a place to put it. I mean, there. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna fill up the space quickly with just the chairs and tables. On oh, the I get it, but, but you know, it's it's amazing how much so, space is in that center school. Well, I, I know. Pack it in. Yeah. So that that's gonna be our next challenge here is to tell everybody that they need to clear out their space. <laughs> uh, Who's gonna move all that stuff? Well, we're open to each office or finance well, committee. <laughs> yeah, finance committee. He's going to find somebody to do that. Do some uh, uh, each office has got stuff in there would 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 sort sort through it and put it in a pile somehow, and then either Keith, depending how much we have, would would move it here, and the rest maybe would go in a dumpster or a shredder. So yeah. we haven't got that far yet. It's community be. barn raising. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we did it for the school. So, we moved all the furniture in. There you go. The way, uh, the, the way the school where the uh, truck showed up with all the furniture. And so, but, yeah, but I missed that one. One of the, the things we're going to have is a, to deal with is a, I guess, a management agreement with Jones Woodset to manage the project. And that would start, manage the construct that contract mm -hmm. project would start in what, June or July. Of this year? Of this year, yes. We had money from the, the 1.3 million that was uh, approved at town meeting that would come off of that. We're looking at, we're not sure yet, 25 to 50 or whatever, to manage that project during construction. <coughs> we need somebody to manage it. Yeah, yeah. and there's, there's Brian is not going to get it every do. day uh, I mean, to make sure we're not. What's the they're problem? doing it right. Yeah, right. So we need to do that and and so far it looks like Jones Whitsap would be the one doing that. Unless we find somebody else. Uh, but they're most knowledgeable of the project anyway since they designed it, so. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Fred. Brian, anything else to you it. wanted to say on it? Covered it. Okay. New, good. new business. We've only got Order eight, eight. eight more things to go and then we go into executive session. Maybe. Dear Lord. No, town administrator updates after that. Oh my God. No, he's not going to have any. <laughs> so you now. Municipal. Yeah, it's good on the list. So there's a grant opportunity through Department of Energy Resources. For well, we're having a per personal, personal policy, policy, policy recommendation. Oh, we're skipping that. Oh, you'll be happy for that. Permanently? <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't have them all pulled together in one place yet. Okay. okay. Um, okay. And I, I figured with the time, you guys would be pretty disappointed. Gosh. But the personnel committee has been working pretty okay. hard. So, as you know, I as know. you sat through those meetings. I did. Um, so we'll keep kicking stuff to the 12th. My team's in the championship. The 12th could be dicey for me. Just as a heads up. Okay. So, there's a municipal energy technical assistance grant open for Department of Energy Resources. Up to $12,500 for assistance 
on a wide variety of items. Um, feasibility studies for municipal solar PV systems. Really, it's there's a list in your packet. Um, if we're going to buy electricity from somebody else, I don't know if we would do solar or we have a smaller solar. I don't know if solar is something we want to do. Um, we're already a green community, so we can't do that. And this isn't, you couldn't buy hardware with this. This is just a, 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 a thinking man's grant, right? Yep. Which means what? You're, they're funding a study, right? right. Is that fair? Yep. So we want to study how we could further solarize our town buildings. Like the school. Like this building. Or this building. And or. It, it says under eligibility that you have to finish your other grants for the green communities. Completed all aspects of previous grants. We're done. Yeah, but if we're getting the one for the town hall. It has to be wait till, till that is completed. The second bullet. Yeah. Previous Green Communities Division Technical Assistance Grant. I don't think our the other grant that we will hopefully get, I don't think will be a technical assistance grant. It's, it says footnote two. It says this includes both owner's agent technical assistance grants and META grants offered. So ours, uh, if we're going to have a one for the town hall, it would be different. Okay, so that doesn't so apply to that. Okay. Right. So this is essentially money to do a study if we have anything we want to do related to clean energy. I mean, do we do we need a study to tell us how to solarize this building in the school? I mean. Between Paul and I, we know how to do this stuff pretty good. I mean, I get, well, so could they put together the specific, you know, could they put together specifications that was sure. essential, sure. that we could just go out to bid for? I mean, I don't know what's on this roof. I don't know whether it's pockmarked with this, that, and the other thing, or whether it's a good roof for solar. I've never been up there. Yeah. I, I don't know either. It's a new roof. And what about hot water for the school? Solar hot water. Not that they use a lot. They have yeah, janitorial use. Yeah. And the school is the biggest user of electricity in the town. So the school ought to be solar. Uh, you know, or the other option is on the Keys building there to put solar. On the what? Town garage. Yeah, I mean, we talked yeah, about that. It's going to add to the roof for a, a couple of years. Well, you put a roof on years. before you right. did that. So. Yeah, yeah, the police. Yeah, yeah but, but we talked about that building is going to be rubble in 10. Yeah. I, I think we got enough if we focus on the school in this building. Yeah, right, because the police station isn't, isn't a good building for it anymore because those trees have grown up. Yeah. Could you use the uh, that new land, that new piece of land for for a uh, ground mount? For ground mount? What piece of land? Which piece of land? I, I, I thought we... At the school? Yeah, we at the school. That. No, we didn't buy that. We didn't buy that? No. We only planted trees on what this, we owned. We didn't buy the extra. Yeah, because we, had, we would have had to buy a larger lot, and it wasn't <clears throat> wasn't in our price range. Yeah. No. I thought we had made that. Yeah. Well, let's uh, look at the school roof then. And this one. And this one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is that, but again, is that the metal roofs? So. Yeah, so that's okay. Yeah. But is that? I guess is that a grant worthy? Function or we, we we could go ask a solar installer to go up on the roofs and say, well, we tell us, give us your best shot. I guess that's what I'm wondering. I mean, are we? Yeah. Would this? Yeah, I guess the solar installer would look. Could they look at the load? Could what? They could, ever, could they look at the load? The load to make sure the roof can hold the load. But a solar installer would do that. An engineer would, yeah, they'd bring in and then say, oh, no, you're going to collapse. Or well, it out. says to provide funding to independent third parties. So it could be an installer, right? To aid municipalities to study and negotiate development and management of clean energy projects. Well, you can ask them. Yeah. Uh, 
grant up to twelve thousand dollars. So, I mean, is, have you looked at the application is itself? Is it a daunting task or no? Because twelve thousand dollars should not be. It's included in here. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, okay. So, if it's included in here, it's not a daunting task because no. for twelve thousand dollars, you don't want to spend a lot of time. No. It's page thirteen. Oh, this is a whole grant application. This is the whole grant application. This is yeah. check the box grant application. Oh. And there's three page up to a three page detailed summary of the project, which you could fill in an hour. Sounds like they got money they got to give away. So let's uh, let's have somebody. But you got all your projects here on pages what, six and seven, I guess, right? That you could. What we can. We're talking about what types. of oil, propane, or electric heated buildings. Have we ever looked at how we're heating all our buildings? Oil, propane, or electric. This is gas, school's gas. Is it time to upgrade? The, the, the system buildings will be gas, I'm sure. Well, this won't do gas. I don't think it's oil, propane, or electric. What new building? Well, Tom Hall, never. Electric. Oh. The old Tom Hall. Electric. Geothermal. Why, why not? Sink it now. But what's, what's oil? The town, town garage, fire, the fire station, police? Center school's oil, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. The, the center school, yeah. Well, so, the hang Hopefully that won't be around for too much longer. The highway garage and a little bit at the library since they can be your system. And what is here is what, propane? Here's natural gas. Natural gas. Yeah, so. It's to gas. A good deal. Okay, so I mean, would that be something worthwhile looking at? You know, Keith is proposing upgrading his, his heating system. That's true. A couple of years from now. I want to look at all the, the other buildings for you. I think that may be a better use of the, of the cash because, again, to, to get a sense of whether this building and the school can have solar placed on it. Any installer worth their salt can do that for free. Right. Yeah. And even the, uh, I guess you could throw in the library. I don't know what the library has been. They, well, they just redid their whole Well, they got the mini splits with oil backup, yeah, I guess. So they're, they're happy with that, yeah. But, uh, Energy efficiency technical systems of processes of public water supply and wastewater treatment facilities. Our second biggest user in the town is the is the water system. Let's say, say it again. Our second biggest user of electricity is the water system, water department. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Those pumps run, and I don't know, they're probably not the newest kind. Is the center um, area still in process trying to get together? Yeah, no, I was just saying that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you could, the last one, heating system conversion energy study, I guess kind of related to the building use. When's this due? June 14th. It starts, you can submit June 14th and it's first come. <coughs> Would it be worth converting all the oil to propane? Well, I hope so, future going to natural gas. <laughs> Maybe someday. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that crystal ball is that good, Fred. Yeah. We can deal with the uh, Berkshire gas down here. Yeah. Good, good luck. <laughs> geothermal. Yeah, geothermal is uh, it's the most efficient way to heat and cool. Yeah. A lot more of it happening. Uh -huh. Well, heat pumps are good if you got solar. Yep. All right, what are we going to do? We're, cause we can't spend all day on this. I, I, I like evaluating upgrading our heating system heating first systems. including the and, and include the water you see that at page six other thoughts and that's what i added on it it's an conversion of heating system type yeah. 
conversion to high efficiency heat pump system. Yeah, see what our see what our options are. We have no idea what our options are. Well, we can do more than one of these things, right? We can get assistance for. Well, they're kind of related. If you do the heating, you want to do heat pump or biomass or solar, I guess. We put solar on the roof here. We do a we do a heat pump system, electric heat pump system, and we put in a uh, a, a battery for storage. Oh, I like that. Yeah. One of those Tesla. Boom. Yeah, all the Teslas. Big thing. We could be we could be practically zero in that energy. Pretty much. That would be cool, by the way. I'm serious. That would yeah, be cool. Be. Yeah. Can we do that? Let's do that. Can, Can you email that to me? Yeah. <laughs> Could be the test site for that. Yeah. Actually, no. Can you repeat that just for a minute? <laughs> yeah, so front page of the New York Times. Right. Pay the site. So uh, <laughs> we're talking about putting in a uh, heat pump, electric heat pump, and the fuel source would be BBs, photovoltaics. And then that would be in conjunction with a battery storage system for the building. Because this would be our town shelter. Well, and we use the building for night a lot, so we need the battery to provide the electricity for night. Yeah. We could do the same in the school. So if it works here, it should work at the school. So you want to do it for both buildings? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. the same type of system for both buildings. And that's novel enough that we could use a consultant for it. Yeah. I like it. Okay. All right, we're heading into our third hour. Yes, and let's not make it a fourth. Second hour. Oh, third hour. Huh? All right. Community Compact Grants. We received a mass IT grant for $4,000 to help Yay. implement the suggestions provided by the IT consultant. Mm -hmm. For the first community compact grant we have, no. and that was to go to a, a cloud-based system. Right. Uh, cloud-based system. And right what here. are we going to use? Yeah. Well, we haven't decided yet. Um, I mean, that's something you can decide on your own, though. Yeah. I'm the contractor. Yeah, you're the contractor. No more. Right. So, I, I mean, we could. We'll do some more research and. I see a lot of these green things. I mean, I, I'm happy to have a conversation with you about it, but I need to be. I work with all these guys, so I need to be very careful. Yeah. So Paul signed that, that uh, contract for that grant. And we also have um, a $15,000 grant, community contact grant, for one of the items we submitted was for the managed water system assets. And I think the idea was that we would have some help with the water merger um, when that, if that were to come to fruition. So that when grant is pending when it does. Um, yeah, I think one of the things we, we need the most assistance on is trying to merge. I mean, we're essentially merging two entities with assets. Mm -hmm. um, and how do we go about that legally? Mm -hmm. um, All right. Taking over the, the water department, taking over the assets of the. Mm -hmm. The private water district. I think it could get some help there. Okay. Well, is it is it that or the the uh, merger of the of the physical of the infrastructure itself? By that I mean I mean once you merge them, having one location where the whole system is located. And the place probably to do it would be on the assessor's maps, the files, where you could see where all the water system is, where all the hookups are. And it would be all on the mass GIS system they're supporting, they're providing to us. Otherwise, now it's on maps that people roll out. We would go You're ask. talking electronic maps. Yeah, electronic oh, no, that's maps, or digital maps, or whatever you want to call it. That's being, that's being done currently. Oh, it is? Yeah. Through, under with, our contract with... with the, no, with uh, FERCOG is doing it. Oh, FERCOG is doing yeah. that? 
when he's been working with them to, to digitize, essentially digitize the wow, Okay, you're digi oh, okay, so they are? Yeah. But is that going to be a, tied with the assessor's maps or same? Uh, I don't know what the base map is. Or the base map? Because assessor's yeah. also has the wetlands, uh, it gives you topo view, uh, property boundaries, uh, <coughs> dimensions, geometrics, uh, lot size, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what. So. Okay. Yeah, All right. It's being done. Is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next. Waiver of rights for first refusal 148 North Street. 148 North Street. I'm going to ask you to sign something that you don't have. I'm going to ask you to sign something you don't have anything. Just in any, case. Any legal rights. We ever to, need to, have. to sign anything. 148 North Street, there's a sale pending right now. And there was. Um, it's composed of two lots and a bigger parcel. And when they did a title search for lot one, which the house is located on, the buyer's attorney came back and said, well, the town needs to, the town needs to remove it out of chapter, chapter 61A. And we went back in the records and we can't find any evidence that it was in chapter 61A. That's the setup. Well, if it wasn't, so they owe a lot of back taxes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Just somebody saying. Knows. Somebody knows. What are we talking about? What parcel here? What lot? One, two, So one. the big one is lot three. Three. And then there's lot one and lot two. Where is this on North Street? Look it up on your telephone. It'd have to be on the east side, right? If it's even number. No idea. Yeah, because the west side is odd number, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, they got a view then. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. View tax. Ooh. Don't stop that. So, so there was a problem, there was an issue with with the original Chapter 628 lien that was filed. It, it instead of instead of referencing a site plan, like it should have recorded site plan, like it should have referenced the assessor's maps, which so the acreage at the time of 52 acres. Now our assessor's map shows 49 something acres. So the buyer's attorney was thinking, oh, well, when it went into chapter land, when it went into 61A, it was one parcel. Those two lots were included. But those lots were, those lots were subdivided, separated out in 1979. The chapter 61A lien was filed in 85. So those lots, it's six years before. Uh, those lots were separated out. <coughs> and there's the fact that it has a house on it, so it was not eligible to ever go into chapter land, according to Cynthia. So what's your point? The point is, we, the, the sellers have asked you to sign the waiver of the right of first refusal, which oh. never, ex which you don't have, you don't have a way, you don't have a right of first refusal because it was never in chapter land, but in order to clear title, they want you to sign it. We're signing. signing something that doesn't need to be signed. Something that doesn't need to be signed, but according to the buyer's attorney, so they can close and satisfy the title company. Well, well, that's but the buyer's attorney. That's not our problem. Well, it's your resident's problem. Who wants to sell his house? I get that. I I, I understand that. And yeah. but but I guess I don't understand how the attorney thinks that us signing something that doesn't exist is going to help the. Well, because he, he has a question as to whether or not it exists. So just in their minds, it's going to help. So we it's don't know what to do anything legally. In, my, in, in our opinion, no. It was never so in people owe well, our taxes gonna, on something? No. The assessors have signed a letter that says the taxes are fine. Why the, did assessors, the assessors did? Then they know for sure it was not 61A. Yes. Well, we just signed something we didn't need to sign, but... All right, well, as long as it doesn't hurt us. That's it doesn't hurt you, and it helps. Okay. All right. It helps the sale go through. Let's move on. Which that's is our closing job. for talk. Okay. okay. Transfer of used car dealer's license, class two, 265 State Road. Transfer of used car license. Zanoni Auto. This is going to this up. Zanoni, yeah. So we have a dealer's license we can transfer to Zanoni. Yeah, pretty much junk. And prorated, if you want to accept the prorated, 64. 
Right, because this, I mean, that used to be a used car dealership years ago. Right. And then it wasn't. It's, it, right. And there was a special permit for it. And now they're going to start selling well, used cars. It sounds like he never gave up his license. Is that correct? He just transferred the last two from... He just didn't sell cars. To, oh. Oh, okay. So it's a straight transfer. Okay. Are you okay with the fee being prorated? Sure. Sure. Appointment of Megan Wenzel to Recreation Commission. Is that still? She's great. Desire? Yep. She's excited. She's ready to move. Not move, but you know, <laughs> act. She says, Serve. She's a town resident. Yeah. Where is she live? I have no idea, frankly. Well, she yeah, wants way to the Recreation Commission. <laughs> okay. Um, great. They're 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 coaches. <laughs> yeah. You know, her and her husband are great. They're they're the salt of the earth. So. Done. Okay. Right. Okay. Any election warrant? Ooh, June thirteenth. Ten a.m. and seven p.m. I'm right in Paul. <laughs> I'm seeing signs out there. I am as well. I saw a sign on my road, and apparently I'm not keeping tab for it. Anyway, you know. I think I do. Although I don't know. Although I don't like that side of the street. I don't. I don't like the signs on my property before being asked. Is it your property or town property? Well, no, it's me and the state's property. Okay. Okay. So June meeting. June twelfth. Do you want to change that date? And I guess we need to know the second date for June. What do you want to do? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, I'll, you know, all cards on the table. If, if my baseball squad makes the championship of the Swansea tournament, I will be in New Hampshire. On June 12th. On June 12th. If we don't, I will be here, sulking. <laughs> So would a later time work for you? No, because no, we'd be there until eight. You know, it's an hour drive. It's, oh, you know. Okay. So and then you go to Waynesport after that. And then we go to Waynesport after that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't I wish? Um, That's my going away party. So, and June thirteenth is the election. June fourteenth should be the new candidate's first meeting. And so there'd be no poll. Mm -hmm. So this would be his last meeting. Well, this should be the week before. Going pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at my calendar here. The seventh, no. The fourteenth. It's flag day. Yeah. You know, the fourteenth is. I mean, I hate to change it. I hate to change it, but it doesn't need to be changed. That being said, is there stuff that's going to be discussed in the twelfth? It's mission critical for me to be at. When when will you know? On June eleventh. Oh, on the eleventh. Yeah. Okay. So we, we don't have time. Yeah, you know, you know, there's no advance notice, and and I, you know, I apologize, but it kind of stinks to make me be a stinker of me to do that to them. Sorry, boys. Do you want to do the fourteen done flames? What's that? You may be going down in flames. The team? Yeah, well. Good. I hope not. I hope not either. 14th and the 28th? Yeah, because I can't do the 26th. I oh, was you can't? say the, 20, the 28th is the soonest, or 29th, the last week in June. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I couldn't do the 26th either, actually, now that I look at it. I might be here, so. I, I, would, I could do the 28th. The 28th. 28th, okay. 28th and 6th. And 14th. Oh, Paul, I feel badly, though. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. I'm writing you in. Well, okay, and you're here at 6 o'clock start time. This is my last meeting. This is your last meeting, that's why I can't. Can we'll go look at that camera and say whatever you want. Well, can, can, can't, you just, can't you still schedule both and then cancel? 
Monday morning if, if you're not here. Well, that's true. You could do that. Well, let's do that. <laughs> do both. We're both on a day. Yeah, let's yeah. let's schedule. Let's have and then one gets camp. One of the other gets camp. That's a yeah. Wow. Notch idea. Yeah. And, and, right. it's, 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 it's difficult to schedule people that way. Well, it's not impossible. It looks like people. Well, I don't know what you're gonna. Oh well, because we'll, yeah. we would have well, well, Jessica. Yeah. Jessica, uh, the folks from Nexamp want to talk about the pilot agreement for the Akoski, depending on what happened next door. Um, can we, can we, can we meet on the 13th, election uh, day? Why Pete can't we meet then? It's from Papua Road. No, I, I can't do it. Right, can't do it's not a good idea to meet on Rapture's anyway. Chris, what, the polls close at 7? If we yeah, need it's it. Not, it's not a good idea. Okay. It's up to you guys. I, you know, let's, yeah. I feel badly for Paul. I really, I genuinely feel badly for Paul. Yeah. Hey, if I don't have to come to another meeting, it's not, it's not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Okay. It would be sad to think that this was my last meeting. Because it's been so bad? or No, it's been it's very year. anticlimactic, you know. I, was, you know. I know. We were going to give you a cake probably or something. Well, you do that without a meeting. I'm, I'm available for it. <laughs> With that, have we? Well, aren't we like the House of Representatives, where once you've been a member of the House, you yeah. have floor privileges the rest of your life? It's, it's sweeping privileges. <laughs> okay, so, so let's do the 14th. The 14th and the 28th. Yes. At 6 o'clock. That's fine. Will you send your handy dandy stuff out? Yes. Handy dandy stuff over time. The schedules. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can let you know. Okay, town administrator updates. Okay. All right. You want the fun stuff first? Yes. We have a Home Depot commercial account. Okay. Somebody made a purchase of close to $5,000 on our Home Depot commercial account in California. Well, that's unusual. Yeah. With the $2,500 limit. With the $2,500 limit. Why do we have a Home Depot? Oh, because Keith has it. Yeah. Way to go, Home Depot. So that, that is that? now blocked, and we've filed a uh, we'll file a police report, and obviously we're not going to pay it. But it was it was a pickup. Somebody actually went to the store, purchased a bunch of kitchen appliances, <laughs> and I believe they signed as Keith and walked out the door with. Wow. How did, how, did, how did they get our account? How they know? I don't know. Inside job, I have no idea. Huh, I guess if right. you go in and say, I forgot my account number, I'm from. Um, so we're, we're, we need to re-examine whether that's <laughs> worth opening or having some other way of. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. What else? Um, we are looking to have the floors in this rebuilding done. Because um, they are in the pretty bad shape. You mean buffed or replaced? Not replaced. Uh, stripped and rewaxed. Oh, all right. Well, that makes sense. Not replaced. Um, they're pretty beat up. And while we have that space completely empty right now, um, it's a good time to do them. By who? What's that? By who? Uh, but we were looking at, what's the, the BKN? You mean the guys who do our work? Oh. Okay. What else? Well, looking to close on June 16th. Right. Just put that out there. So we're, what we're thinking is that on a Friday we would close the town uh, town offices. Oh, that's and, convenient. And, yeah, it's nice. Well, we'll do it in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. I mean, the idea is that'll have the weekend to be around. Um, okay. Okay. What else? And let's see. That is it. All right. Okay, so now we're going to executive right, what's, what's this new program thing? Did you want to talk about new program? Executive session time. That's in executive session. That's session. executive session. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Thanks for right. all. Goodbye. Where are you going to go? Do my farewell address. Oh, okay. wait, 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 wait. What do you mean, wait? <laughs> just, just hold on for one second. Lame duck. School ducky. It seems like it's been that long, yes. Listen, Four Ducky. Score in seven years. <laughs> It's only been 12. 
12 years ago, this young lad approached me. Yeah. He said, you think I should I, run for selectman? And I encouraged him to do so. And I encouraged everybody out there to get involved in the town. Get <laughs> All right, guys. Okay. okay. See ya. Okay, okay. so. I, I would really call them okay. back y'all. Um, it's been great working with everybody. Um, I think Waitley works very well thanks to all of us and you all who make it work well. And I've been trying for several years to get a little recognition board up there for all the people who serve on the committees and employees and staff who make Waitley run as well as it does. And I think, and I ask for volunteers out there to be on our committees and to run for office. So, thank you, Mary Ellen, John, Fred, Brian, all of those who've come before you during my tenure to make it an enjoyable experience. So, that's all I have to say. Well, you and I, have, we have served on this just board together for 12 years. I know. It seems like just 12 years ago. <laughs> How time flies. And it has been a real, a real pleasure that 12 years to, we've had a lot of battles. Well, not we personally. No, we, no, 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 no. We rarely we fought battled. together. Exactly, on a lot of good fights. And uh, I personally will miss working with you. I, very much. I with you as well. Well, thank you. My wife will see you more than I do now. Of walking the dog. Walking the dog. Yeah. I will be walking the dog even more. <laughs> <laughs> the dog's not looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, who knows what the future will bring. Okay. The chair of the finance committee just left. You can go catch him. That's all right. Are we ready to go into executive session? We are. All right. I'll read something. I'll read section 8 here. To go into executive session per MGL chapter 30A, section 21A, subsection 6, to consider the lease of real estate if the chair declares that an opening meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body in subsection 2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for contract negotiations with non-union personnel. The board will not be returning to open session. So we'll call vote, Paul? I vote yes. Fred? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Okay. All right.